If you want tips for shooting photos of helicopters or are just curious what it's like to be right up next to one as it comes in for a landing, stay right there because I'm going to share with you three things I learned taking photos of helicopters for the very first time. So first off, I was super lucky to get this opportunity. My friend Sean, who runs an event company here in Ontario, invited me up north for the day to take photos of his event where they were gonna have not one, but two AS350 helicopters. I found out very last minute that I was gonna do this and only had about 48 hours to kind of pull all my gear together. So I figured I'd take from what I learned shooting the helicopters and share it with you so that anyone who's gonna be doing the same in the future has something to reference. I'm gonna break this down into three areas. One, what it was like to shoot outside the helicopter when all the blades were spinning two, what it was like shooting inside the helicopter when we were actually flying, and then three, what type of gear modifications or recommendations I would make to anyone in a similar situation. Okay, so first off, shooting outside the helicopter when the blades are going full blast is extremely dusty and windy. And we were shooting in the winter when kind of the ground was frozen, but we were in a gravel pit area and there was a lot of loose debris. And even though it was kind of frozen, the blades were actually throwing it all over the place. You'll see I was wearing some eye protection because I kind of anticipated that that would be a, an issue. Uh, but even with the eye protection, I was getting dust behind the back of my glasses. I looked at my camera afterwards and I had dust inside like all the little buttons and everything. And even afterwards, a few of us were talking, we had like dust settled on the inside of our ears. It was pretty, it was kind of funny. So helicopters, especially ones of this size, produce about 4,000 pounds of rotor thrust, which sounds like a lot because it is a lot. It's actually enough that you can lift a piece of plywood off the ground. And so in our safety briefing, they were kind of going over everything we were wearing and everything we had on us. So things like hats, you're not really supposed to wear a hat, but if you are, you're supposed to kind of hold on to it. I had a little toque, so it was kind of on my head. And you'll see at one point, I think there's a video clip where I actually kind of hold on to it because the helicopter's coming in and all the wind from it is just generating all this uplift. Also any loose items in pockets. Like a lot of the guys that were there had pouches and antennas and things. And so we had to go over all of that and actually make sure they were all really secure. One of the things that I experienced was even just holding onto my camera as the helicopter came in and descended and landed, all of that wind, you're kind of just taking it on. And so you think, oh, I'm gonna get a nice handheld steady shot, but actually you're, you're kind of just there and you're shaking and your whole, Emphasis is on just keeping the camera steady so you get that nice clean shot. The pilots who gave us the safety briefing at Helicopters Canada did a really good job of kind of warning us of all these little things and telling us where the safe spots were to stand in front of the helicopter. You don't want to be behind it because of the tail and the blade spinning. We were given instructions on how to properly approach the helicopter. So being inside the helicopter was actually something I was a little bit nervous of. I'm not someone who enjoys roller coasters or amusement park rides, I tend to get a little bit nauseous. I've been on airplanes and stuff like that, so I kind of knew what to expect a little bit, but this was my first time in a helicopter and taking off vertically is a different experience than taking off horizontally. The pilots we were working with typically do chartered flights and aren't flying as aggressively as you would say if you're coming in really hot for a landing or doing kind of military evasive maneuvers. It was kind of really fun to see the excitement from their perspective and from the guys in the helicopter who really enjoy that type of thing. Needless to say, it wasn't as scary as I kind of anticipated it to be. I was perfectly fine and I was actually focusing on my camera screen most of the time. And I'm someone who tends to get a little bit car sick and I, I don't like to use my phone when I'm in a car. So th that was something I was worried about, but in the end, I actually had no problem at all. 
Uh, so the other thing too was the noise inside of the aircraft. I was expecting it with the sound of the engine and the blades to be so noisy that you actually wouldn't be able to hear anything, but it wasn't so loud that you couldn't yell. Obviously the pilots had their headsets, but if I needed to turn to the person next to me and yell something to them in case for whatever reason, I could still do that. When we were flying, because it was cold out, we had the doors on, so I don't know if that would make a difference if you're flying and shooting video where the doors are open. Okay, so all that to say, here are my photo takeaways if you're someone who's either shooting photo or video of helicopters. So consider the season that you're shooting in. If it's in winter like we were, you'll have less of a problem dealing with debris, but even with my UVEC safety glasses, I still had debris get behind them, and there was a few points where I did lose a little bit of visibility. So if I was to do it again, I'd probably go with full seal eye protection. I think no matter where you're shooting, you're gonna get some sort of debris. So just keep that in mind that having safety glasses will let you keep your eyes on your camera at all times. One of the things I struggled with before getting into the helicopter was choosing what lens to shoot with. I only have a single camera body, so I had to make the decision because I didn't want to be inside the helicopter as it was moving, trying to switch lenses and then potentially missing shots. In the end, I went with my 15 to 35 just because I felt like capturing the experience of being inside the helicopter and looking out was more important. I think if I had scenic landscapes and other things I wanted to capture that were outside the helicopter, I probably would have gone with the telephoto lens. I knew our helicopters were gonna be flying really close to the ground. Like we were basically right over the treetops. And so you can see in some of the footage that just looking out the window with the wide angle lens actually gave some really cool shots. Another thing to consider is the actual movement of the helicopter. We were flying on a day where there was actually some significant wind gusts and there would be times where the helicopter would kind of jerk around a bit and I'm trying to hold my camera as steady as possible and you know maybe do some slight movements and whatever. I think in the end I probably should have just focused on keeping the camera as steady as possible you know looking out the window focusing in the cockpit at maybe something specific and then that way the helicopter would have done all the movement and told the story for me. I think it depends on, again, what you're trying to capture. Are you focusing on what's outside of the helicopter? Because then, you know, just point it at something and let the helicopter do its banks and its rotations. If you're focusing on something inside, then maybe you can do a little bit more movement if you're someone who's doing video, for example. If you're doing photo, definitely up your shutter speed more than what you would normally, just so that you're not getting any of that camera shake producing blurriness. Okay. Lastly, and probably the most important thing out of all of this, is make sure you have some sort of lens protection. So I was shooting video most of the time and I was using my ND filters on both of my lenses. And I walked away and I noticed at the end of everything, I've actually got some really small micro scratches on the front of my ND filter. And that's because of all the dust and everything coming at my camera ended up leaving some really, really small micro scratches on the front of my ND. Now I don't think it's ruined my ND filter because they are quite small, but it is noticeable. I think I would have been a lot more concerned if I had no lens filter on and those dents were on the front of my camera because you can't replace that. Something like a $20, $30 UV protection filter is quick and dirty to replace. An ND filter, unfortunately this one's a bit more expensive. It's like 200 some odd dollars. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not. Will I still use that ND filter? Most definitely, I'll, I'll still use it. Want to say goodbye? <laughs> you gonna say something? What's going on? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's a cat. Anyways, that's it for me for this one. Hopefully you learned something and have some takeaways for your next photo shoot. If there's anything I covered that you feel like I missed a piece of information or you'd like to know more about, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it as best I can. If you like this format video where I explain things I've learned from past photo shoots, give this a thumbs up so that I know and I will totally make more videos like this. Peace out.